with our now very early understanding of time series and our quite general explanation of what time series is, we aren't really able to do anything with a time series. If you want a more rigorous understanding of what time series really is, then you have to know that time series has something to do with so-called stochastic process. So the rigorous definition of time series is the realization of a stochastic process. And that creates a very interesting problem. In statistics, we have a population. And when we say that we want to understand the population's characteristics, we're usually talking about knowing the population's parameters. Like the population mean is mu, the population variance is sigma squared. But in statistics, these populations can be huge. So we often don't know what the values of the population parameters exactly are. So we take a sample with which to do the inference about the entire population. We say we take a r random sample of n uh, as a nasty number of observations. And what do we mean when we say we're taking a random sample? That means the value of the first observation has nothing to do with the value of the second observation, and so on. So those values, which you could call x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth, until you get to xn, those values... Uh, those observations is values, those are independent if it's a random sample, okay? Those observations are independent. So therefore, when you're doing your usual statistical inference, you have n observations in your random sample. Now, what's the challenge in time series? The challenge in time series is that most of the time you just have one observation, most of the time. Time series is a realization of a stochastic process. The population is the stochastic process. And you just you have just one realization of the stochastic process. So really, it's one sample of that. So for example, you say, I want to look at a company's sales or returns. For that company, we just have one series, just one series. So for example, January to April, all of those is just one series. It's just one realization. So how can you use one realization to make an inference? We have to really understand what a stochastic process is. And because of that, we have to make certain assumptions in order to be able to do the inference. A stochastic process is a family of time indexed variables. Some people choose it to call it Y. Dr. Wei chooses it to call it Z or Z in Canada. I'm just going to say Z. So he, he calls it Z omega t. You can see this on page 6, at the start of chapter 2, where omega belongs to the sample space, and t belongs to an index set. For a fixed t, the, the z omega t is a random variable. And for a fixed omega, the z omega t is a function of time. And the z omega t is called a sample function or realization. So in other words, in a time series, you just have a sample function. Time series data is just one realization. Now, in your mind, you have the time series variable as z omega t. But in practice, it's indicated a bit differently. I don't know how many of you have studied probability theory in detail, but imagine a random variable x being defined on a sample space omega. That random variable x being a function of that sample space omega and the events that uh, correspond with that sample space and the probabilities corresponding to the occurrence of those events. The random variable x omega, now you can think of the random variable as being x omega, but in statistics notation we normally skip the omega part. We just refer to it as the random variable x. And the same thing applies in time series. We don't normally put down z omega t, we just put down z t. Let's look at this very simple example. Then you'll understand what a stochastic process is and what time series is.